dear, but we're we're on, we're here. Um, I'm so pleased and glad to have Ryan and Des with me. Um, this is what I'm calling the I'm Curious to Know project presented by Inner Voice. Uh, the goal is really to have these interesting, positive, uh, fun-filled hours or 45 minutes of conversation with world-class athletes, innovators, and unique personalities from the endurance sports world. Um, my two first guests today definitely fit that bill. Ryan uh, and Des, how are you? Doing good here. How are you doing there, Travis? Yeah, good. It's uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Massachusetts. Uh, I know you guys are in in Michigan. You're about to head uh, head north this afternoon up to the the lake. Um, let's talk about the climate we're in. Uh, I feel like I've been through three phases of this isolation. The first phase is I was reading all the blogs about uh, working from home, so I was getting up out of my chair every hour, doing laps around the house. But I quickly found that the laps ended up going to the pantry or to the fridge uh, every single time. So I ended up having the um, the uh, pantry phase, I'm going to call it. Uh, the second phase was um, deciding when it was appropriate to start drinking booze uh, before or after your second coffee. Um, so that was phase two, drinking before lunchtime. Uh, and then we're in three, phase three right now. So... Uh, I wonder if you guys have had the same feeling. Tell me about your three phases of isolation so far. Ryan, you go first. Uh, okay. I gotta think on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say like the first, that phase one, like I guess a couple things. I get to work from home every day for my my day job, um, so that's kind of hasn't changed. But definitely, like that phase one was like, oh, this is only like this would be like ten days or something, no big deal, whatever, enjoy it. Um, but it was kind of like, ah, oh, this is this is kind of fake. But the pantry thing is a is a for real thing. Like I do that nonstop. Like you walk up, grab something out of the cover, come back two seconds later, and you're like, oh, there's got to be something else in there. You're like, no, there isn't. <laughs> um, I kind of laugh about it. like was not. Was that stress eating or is that typical? <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of working from home. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Hope that the elves like refreshed it, yeah. refilled it when we were gone. Um, there, there was that that phase, that phase one of like, all right, it's like noon. I guess you can go ahead if you want to start drinking at one at any point because like nothing else going on. I think phase two is kind of like, yeah, there's still like the drinking going on, like the the hang around, hang around, <clears throat> and enjoy things in the evening because you're like, well, I got nothing else to do. Um, and now I think phase three is kind of like, uh, we're kind of in for the long haul, like. Can we get a little bit of normal back or like I just want to go like see people and like not even see people but like go to the store and like people like actually smile and say hello then like kind of feel like kind of take up the world and everything yeah um, yeah awesome. what about you Des? mine um i would say i had grief really early on because it was like i've lost a race like right from the gun um that was sort of when you realized the seriousness of it um so it was like processing that and then almost going back and being like oh yeah that olympic trials thing was a real bummer too um mm. so all of that was like right up front and then it was like okay well i get to kind of hit reset take a break do the thing where we stay up and do happy hour zooms for way too late <laughs> drink all the drinks and um just kind of be a little bit of a mess for part of this middle of time and then um part three was kind of like, okay, like let's get some goals and some motivation. And I know we talk about like, um, you know, loving the process and people were talking mm -hmm. about the races being canceled. And I was like, well, nothing counts this year. This is a waste of time. And it was like, uh, for me, it's like, it can be really valuable right now. And the people who manage stress the best and deal with uncomfortable times and um, don't waste opportunities and can kind of find opportunity in really crappy situations, uh, are the ones who come out on the other side like really ready to rock and so I was like what can I do during this time but also it's like it's sustainable because we don't really know how long this is going to be so yeah find interesting and enjoy doing and potentially for a really long haul or maybe just for a short time and then things get back to normal and I feel good about it so um, yeah. that was setting goals with my coach and having a game plan for the next couple months for training so yeah, that's awesome. That's well said. Um, now, I want to dig in and make this fun. I want to I want to hear the story of how you guys met. I love the story, but I want to hear it from from you guys first. And and most importantly, who made the first move? 
Come on. Oh. <laughs> um, so we actually met um, going to the Detroit Expo, the Marathon Expo, to work for, I think it was Power Bar. Uh, I can't, men I can't mention them. Uh, uh, it was a different type of bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> not Power Bar, different bar. And we, don't, we no longer work with them. But anyways, you're driving out to the Detroit Expo and, um, you know, passing out samples and such. And um, Ryan picked me up. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to work it too. So we'll, we can share a ride or whatever. Super nice. And then we were chatting on the way out there. And he was just kind of getting, like, my background, like, where I was from. And, um, oh, you're a runner on the team. Um, and so he started talking to me about like, <clears throat> the, the Michigan State and their conference and how great they were, uh, which my coach at Arizona State actually – switched over to coach at Michigan State so like I was very aware of how good they were but we were just better and so I explained that to him like, yeah they're they're okay but we're significantly better so that was our first kind of real meeting <laughs> and so you're trying to impress her with your uh college sports knowledge Ryan yeah I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah <he's just> <laughs> there's no right answer here yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know I I think you're just very proud. Uh, yeah, like I was kind of proud. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not like a. I have buddies that are like a diehard, I would call them Michigan State, like slappies. <laughs> um, that, like they blue eat green and white, like till they're yeah. going to die. Uh, I'm just like proud of like school or that, but I was just like, oh, we were always good. But <clears throat> when you didn't know anything else, we used to, like, I don't know. I didn't know anybody really play that yeah, was a collegiate athlete growing up or even when I was at college. And so it was like, Oh well, you followed the sport. They were like, "Oh, well, they're pretty good here and, and whatnot." Um, so I, know, I think I was just like, "Oh yeah, we're we're good." Like, yeah, we make it to, and they make it to NC. So, like, they have some good girls on the team. They have some good guys and whatever. So. Yeah. Now, so you guys train together, obviously, um, Ryan. I can uh, emphasize em emphasize empath. I I have empathy for you, um, <laughs> being the uh, the second best runner in your family. Yeah. yeah, I know that one. <laughs> um, now, it's, uh, now I did promise that we'd talk about the moustache. I did promise we'd bring it up. Now, I feel like it might be a bit of a lucky charm that you can't get rid of it. Um, tell me what about are you, how, <laughs> what are you doing? You're setting him up for the lifelong moustache. I know. Yeah, yeah, this is a lucky charm. You can't get rid of it because good things happen when you have the moustache on. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think it was. It was like kind of a jokey. Laugh, laughing matter the one fall i was like oh we were doing some things i was like my fall time spent some time like uh bow hunting in michigan and i was like oh this i gotta change my luck here or whatever you know like in different things and it was like late december i was like oh forget the full beard's not even helping let's just do something stupid and then <laughs> her uh sister and her sister's boyfriend came and i'm like we'd never met the boyfriend yet so it's kind of like oh let's try it. i'm gonna be intimidating here this <laughs> this guy with the mustache even though he's younger um so i was like oh let's keep it and then like a couple people were like ah, oh, it's not that bad and you kind of get like roll with it and then <clears throat> happens to win the marathon so you're like well i, I can't get rid of it now and it's kind yeah. of I laugh now, like, if I got rid of it, I don't know, like, if people would even trust me being a, a coffee roaster. Like, it's like, you know, like, do you trust a chef that does not have, like, a, an arm sleeve tattoo and everything? You know, it's like... Yeah, yeah, it, I, I get it. It's uh, it's one of the requirements. Now, you and I met, we crossed paths on the Everyman Jack tri-team. Um, now, you've you've kind of moved on from there. You, you're also doing some gravel tri stuff. I don't want to talk about Everyman Jack first because Rich, I know he's probably listening. Um Rich, I made an order on April 12th and I still haven't received it. So uh, I know you'll personally get on it. Um, um, no. So Rich, uh, obviously the, the, the man behind Everyman Jack, and we were lucky enough to cross paths on the team. You've now moved on doing a little bit more of gravel cycling. I know you had a couple of races on your calendar, uh, yeah. including Dirty Kanza. Tell me about kind of how you feel about races being cancelled and postponed and like how has that been for your motivation? Yeah, it's, so it's a uh, it's a it's definitely a disappointment when I look at it. Like, I mean, <clears throat> I think about it. Like this weekend, we are going to be in California for a Belgian waffle race, uh, and then whatever three four weeks later, it's going to be Dirty Kanza. Um, yeah. Things that I had really set on the calendar for this year were exciting, and 
it's kind of one of those things that at first you're like, oh no, it's going to happen. And then you're like, uh, things keep on changing. Like, oh, I guess not. And it's, it's kind of like disappointing, but at the same time you're like, all right, well, <clears throat> it is what it is. Everyone's going to deal with it, but like trying to be like, okay, what can I do now to like prep better for it? Or how can I enjoy it? Like when I get to it, I get to do it. Like how much better is it going to be like that? It's like that big party that everyone's going to like when races do happen. And especially some of these like kind of grassroots, smaller ones, like they're kind of parties as it is at, with them. It's just like more relaxed atmosphere um, that these are going to like when they do happen, it's going to be pretty, pretty cool. I think of like people say like Kansas, like uh, <clears throat> the Super Bowl of gravel racing. Yeah. Uh, and so like, when it does happen, it's going to, like they say, this fall is the plan now. It's, it's going to be pretty cool because it's going to be one like, the first bike races of the year. Um, yeah. Have everybody together. It's, I don't know, it's going to be exciting then and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, totally. I think you're right. I think there's going to be this kind of coming out party for people once events um, mm -hmm. are on and people can get together. And uh, it honestly feels like a long stretch, though, really, to get to the point where we can have tens of thousands of people together um but we'll see and um yeah i know that des you've also got something on the same weekend that you're looking forward to um before we get there i want to talk about the olympic trials this was obviously just before the shit hit the fan so to speak um like we my memory of that is we were sitting in our living room we had the, the coverage on the tv uh, my daughter, three-year-old daughter, Adelina, and I were standing there screaming at the TV. I was texting Ryan. Um, the, the lady who was in third didn't look great. We we're like, Des is definitely going to catch her. We're, I, I'm like shouting profanities. Um, so, so I don't know if that helped if you heard us. But um, tell me about, obviously, the, the, um, the disappointment. I know fourth is probably the worst place to finish. Tell me about what that was like. How disappointing was that when you crossed the line? You've given your best. You've had an amazing day physically, but you just, there was three people better on the day. What was that like? Yeah. Um, brutal, man. I didn't know this is what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set something up for this time. I had to but... go a little bit deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think it's it's super tough. It, you plan for four years and you put this thing on the calendar and um, visualize reaching that goal every single day. And that's like what gets you out of the door. And I think I would have been significantly more crushed, not to say that I wasn't very disappointed. I'm still kind of having like a pity party every now and then I'll like feel sorry for myself because I can. Um, but if I hadn't had made the 2012 team and had the experience in 2016, um, if this was my first and only shot and I came up 11 seconds shy, I would have been absolutely devastated. Um, it was still really hard because you see the people who are celebrating uh, yeah. with their friends and family, they're putting the flag on them, they're doing the press conference, like their brands are just like ecstatic, uh, their friend, you know, friends and family, everyone's out there. Um, and I know exactly what that moment feels like because I've done it. Um, and so yeah. I'm not sure if that makes it easier or more difficult. And like when I was, I was actually in fifth place for a lot of the late part of the yeah. race, Laura Sweet, um, I think she's been fourth in the trials before, but like, I almost felt like I had this duty to pass her. Like she's going to be crushed to be fourth by 15 seconds. So if she's fifth by, you know, that much, then, then maybe it makes it a little bit easier for her. And I can like handle being the alternate. Um, and I'm sure that's not the case. Like it's just as difficult and everyone says fourth is the worst, but it's actually not like fifth is a little bit worse and sixth is a little bit worse. And yeah. if you're fourth, you're justified in believing like I had a chance, like, you know, mm -hmm. and it was really hard to stomach, but I'm also like at a point in my career where I've done it and I know exactly what it's like. Um, and I'm sad that I missed the opportunity, but I'm very, very fortunate that I had it in the past. Um, and I'm also super thrilled for the people who made the team, you know, like yeah. it's such a great, great group of women and that like pack that we were with was so strong. Um, it's it's one of those sports where there's so much respect for people who are doing it the right way and then they have their moment and you want it to be you but when you see people work their asses off and like get that reward you're like well hats off to you you know that's yeah 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 that's well said and obviously like you know 
there's there's a uh, benefit to being a good sportsman as well it's not you know it, it doesn't help when you're finishing fourth but like you can go to bed at night knowing that you're a good sportsman and you're cheering those those girls on legitimately um now i know that there's been some talk about trying for the ten thousand and doing some time trials and some some work there um i also know there's obviously an injury risk of that like faster running injury risk so i've made a little bit of a list um of, of, of other options that you might consider um <laughs> Now I want to I want to throw a disclaimer out there to the people or the sports federations that I mention here. I'm not <laughs> suggesting that Des can just walk in and make the team. I understand that the girls who make the team will be legitimate athletes who have been training all their life. But here's here goes. Um, so the demonstration sports I think is probably a good option. Um, I think softball. Tell me about your rating out of one to ten of your likelihood of being a softball athlete at the 2020 plus one Olympics. Played some softball as a young kid. Did not stick with it long. There's a reason. Um, <laughs> well, two to three on that, that Schmeyard there. <laughs> Off the list. Yeah. All right, next one. Karate, another demonstration sport. Tell me about your karate skills. Are there weight classes? Because I'm oh, I didn't do enough research. Shit. Um, yeah, let's say yes. <laughs> then I can get into it. I think I'm agile and um, I can take some beatings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, what do you think about the karate skills? How many backhands has she given in the last month since you guys have been on top of each other? I would say there's been a few. I mean, we're, <laughs> I, I put her up as a strong karate fighter. I, I'd give her a good. Thanks. A, Scrappy. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, just, I'll see that. Yeah, I can, I can, All right, we're going to give that a tick. Karate's on the list. Yeah. Uh, the next one is skateboarding, another demonstration sport. I just feel like my. Ankles both just broke hearing that. Okay, off the list. Uh, last one, another demonstration sport here, surfing. That's the sweet spot, you know. Yeah. Um, I always say I'm not a good swimmer. I'm a sinker. You put a board under me, that changes everything. And if I fall, it's okay. There's some give underneath. I think I, that would probably be my best, my highest hopes. All right. So I already have the... All right. Okay. There's a tick for surfing, brah. Shaka. <laughs> um, so we've got surfing. So any of the uh, the surfing folks out there, reach out to Des and karate second choice. <laughs> um, Des, and I, I like the way you put it, Des, on, on Twitter today. You're still an Olympic hopeful. Des, what are you, um, Ryan, what are you an Olympic hopeful in? What is What are you kind of shooting for next year? Uh, I have some <laughs> yeah, I got I got a few options. Um, <laughs> had a couple of federations reach out to me. Uh, yeah, we will go badminton. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the, the sport that cycle that one you ride the bicycle cycling is definitely on the list. Uh, we've uh, had, what, what's that? I don't know anything about that. Yeah, no, no. We bought him a helmet because he's <laughs> yeah. just learning. Like, yeah. <laughs> Training wheels. Yeah. True. Um, uh, what if you uh, won off the wall that you would just automatically be good at? You pick surfing. Uh, oh, is that, I mean, surfing. I mean, like you're on the beach, you're underwater, why not? I, oh, you know, I, uh, sailing. Sailing. We, we, I call it sailing. Yeah. Situation. Definitely on the list there for uh, yep. little lasers. All right, so we're on. So you're on the sailing. Uh, so here's a funny story. Well, I actually moved to Canada 11 years ago. So I spent some time in Canada. Um, and when I arrived, it was the middle of winter, and curling was on the TV. And I was like, "This is the e this has to be the easiest sport in the history of the world. Like, there's no way that I can't be an Australian Olympian at curling." Um, and the good, well, the good thing about curling as well is the winner actually pays for the beers for the losing team. So when I was first starting, we went to these von Spiels and I was I was terrible and you get bought beer. So it's like this incentive to get worse. So <laughs> I never pursued that dream of the uh, being an Australian Olympian in curling. But that would have been, there we go. You guys have an Australian a curling team. I was going to start it. I, like, I feel like if you start the federation, you've, you're automatically on the team. So that was the, that was the idea. I like um, it. We'll work on the dream. Maybe that's, maybe that's next phase. Um, I want to talk to you guys about coffee. Um, I feel like I have a tab um, that runs into almost the thousands um, from all the coffee that you've sent me. And I think that you've also actually sometimes sent me stuff um, at exactly the right time. I'm about to bust out the Whole Foods 
roast because we've run out and then a shipment comes from you. So I'm very grateful and thankful to you for that. Oh, th oh thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I, I, um, have, I don't know. I have like those little bugs planted throughout your house. So it's like, yeah. it alerts me. It's like coffee slow. Yeah. The Travis. You've got some, you've got some tracker consumption, consumption tracker. I like your style. <laughs> Um, tell me about how you got into that. I think that obviously like it, became, it was a passion project for you when you first started and you got more into roasting and tell me about kind of that process of you getting into roasting and then, and then starting the company. Uh, so like, I guess our, our passion started for coffee over the years with Des, like we would always be traveling to r different races with her, different spots of the country or different parts of the world. Um, it's, just starting to learn to enjoy coffee for what it is, but then it was going to different places and trying small specialty shops and different roasteries. And that started growing to turning into like how many bags can you put in your, how much room do you have in your uh, carry on bag for coffee when you come home um, and like fell in love with it. I think like our record was like, we came home from Australia with like maybe like 24 bags um, on a trip, just like throw out the shoes, yeah. Just throw those clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, leave them behind. You can appreciate, it. Yeah. Um, but we like turned to really liking it. New, we had some a uh, couple shops by us that had started getting into roasting. Um, and we kind of had some connections with them and started just like chatting and talking and learning more about it. I had started playing with uh if you want to really the, like depends on what you what type of your if you have dogs at home some will like it some don't uh air popper and you can do it via air popper and it's right. popcorn. yeah popcorn machine and you do about 50 grams at a time but usually there ends up being so heavy smoke and next thing you know you got like <laughs> going off and it's, like a, it's like a disaster running around your house um but you like learn but I learned a process of what was going on and it was like, Oh, this is, this is like, let's look at a ro small roaster and see what happens with it. Um, and kind of like, Oh, we'll do this. Let's, let's try it. Got a small one kilo roaster. Um, took a bunch of classes via online, did some books through like some people that were pretty high, or highly respected in the coffee industry. Um, and started doing it started roasting it and giving it to friends and family to, to test out and um, felt like we started, like it was, you look back now at it and you're like, oh, would I really drink that coffee now? Or, or, or yeah. like, oh, hey, thanks, you gave me some Sorry. coffee, but as soon as you leave, they're like throwing yeah. it in the trash, like that. <laughs> uh, oh, Ryan gave us more coffee, great, yeah. What, that's yeah, right. just exactly what I want for my birthday, thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think we, we kind of started understanding like it is a very artsy crafty type deal uh related a lot to like wine or uh craft beer it's you know like there's a lot a lot that goes into it in, in different styles to like what i might roast is not what like everybody might like and vice versa type thing um and so we kind of started the company and seemed to happen to coincide with that's winning the marathon and um it was, of, yeah literally like that same week that weekend we're like well so yeah. launch it'll be kind of a fun place to test it out and then yeah yeah what a perfect time to launch you guys that's a uh, great plan that you had there yeah right. we talked about it he's like i'm gonna grow a mustache and you're gonna look <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um but yeah it just kind of it grew from there and since then we've grown to bigger, larger roaster, so six kilo roaster. And we laugh at like, like before at first you bought a 50 pound bag and you're like, oh man, this is going to take a while to roast up. And now all of a sudden you're getting like pallets that are like eight to 10, 70 kilo bags. And you're like, how long is this going to last? I mean, yeah. Shoot, I got to make a phone call again and keep restock. restock and, and at the same time though, I feel like I've, gotten way 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 better than the original days but really understand and have a pat it's a it's a passion it's a job but it's something that you enjoy um and you enjoy sitting there doing it and working with people and teaching them about coffee and allowing them to enjoy it however they they like it like if it's 
you know, it's that one, maybe 15 minutes a day, they get to relax and forget about things. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah, you're right. It is something that's more than just a, it's not a, just a uh, consumable. It's a, a, a ritual, you know, people get up and they, you know, the smell and all of that stuff plays a part of it. Um, I know that you, you guys did an amazing campaign recently um, to support people on the front lines of this pandemic and um, people who are dealing with the worst of the worst. Um, you did a buy one, donate one campaign. Um, tell me about that. Tell me about where that idea came from. Tell me about how late the nights were when you were up roasting and bagging and shipping and doing all that thing to get all of that product out to the people who purchased and obviously then the people who were, who were on the front lines and needed it most. Yeah, it was not like a long thought out thing. We we're just kind of like sitting at home, had a bunch of time and, um, you know, you hear stories from your friends who are working late and doing these medical jobs and they're just like you're exhausted. And we were like, well, we have, we have the perfect resource for that. Like everyone loves coffee and yeah. you know, in, in the hospitals, like, you know, we're in the bag and we realized that we could actually do something in this time and whether or not it was helpful, it wasn't about, gaining a profit or anything like that. It was just like, hey, let's try and do something. And at the end of it, you know, we roasted a bunch of coffee, sold a bunch of coffee, had bags we needed to buy, uh, beans we needed to buy. So it's just this kind of way to help a bunch of people out and feel a little bit busy during this time. But um, we sort of thought about it. And we're like, I bet like 50 people will buy bags. Like maybe 25, maybe 30. If 50 is a good, good shot. Um, and then 400 plus bags later, we're like, oh my gosh, we're going to have to do this in increments. And so we still have like some of these gift ones that we're slowly doling out and getting to places, but I think people still need coffee. So, um, it's yeah. well. so fulfilling the orders was like, let's make sure every customer's happy. Um, and if it's someone that's like, Hey, I would like to donate to this person. I'm just sending these bags and match them. Uh, we probably threw in a few extra just so that shipping classes didn't kill us. But, uh, for the most part, you know, we did all of those and then have been slowly um, dropping out 10 pound bags here or there to, to some facilities. Yeah, it was, de <clears throat> it was definitely like, like Doug said, you know, I'm like, uh, she said to me, I'm like, ah, uh, we do 40, 50 orders this weekend. Like that'd be a good, that'd be a great weekend. And like a little more than like a normal weekend, no big deal. And all of a sudden you like start looking and you're like, Oh, okay. Like it's it's going. Oh wow. Oh man. Like how crazy. Like and we're gonna be busy. We're gonna yeah. <laughs> so you're like, but it's like it was that first bit of like, kind of like that beginning of the like we talked earlier, like that phase one, and like this is awesome. Like it gives you something to take your mind off, and you're trying to reward those people that are out there in the front lines working for us. And it's not just like I hate to say it, the front lines that you hear a lot of of. Um, the medical people that we that got it but like we helped out our local post office workers were able to keep you know like they talk about getting to scan the bat the boxes in each day and that's like huge for them to show that they're worth of their jobs in the US Postal Service. Um we worked with our wholesalers in Chicago and then the trucking company. And so it's like there's a lot of people that were touched all the coffee, which I we I feel good about and I think Des says too it's we're supporting everybody here and trying to keep people be able to go to work and everything. It's, it's yeah. small things. We're, we're a tiny company, but if yeah. any company did, you know, what they could right now, then it helps out a ton of people in a little way. And that becomes something bigger if we all kind of chip in, if we can. And some people just can't. So yeah. Yeah. Well, we had that opportunity. And it was, I guess, yeah. Well, kudos to you guys for, for putting that into action. And some of the best ideas are uh, ones you just have in the middle of the night and you just make them happen like this, where we're trying to do uh, Facebook streaming and audio streaming on Instagram <laughs> as well. And everyone's like um, up in arms about the echo. I apologize for that. Um, but we will be able to watch the live stream elsewhere. I'll share it with everyone. Um, but we're doing our best. But um, yeah, you guys are awesome. Tell me a little bit more about kind of the plans for the company. I know that, Ryan, you still have a, a real job. Um, it, is the plan to kind of make this a, a permanent full-time thing? Um, tell me about kind of the goals there. And hopefully no one from your work's listening and I'm um, getting in trouble. So you can feel free to pass on this question if, if not appropriate. <laughs> um, no, I think like... It's a, I mean, it's a pretty, I don't want to say it's a 
the full-time gig right now, but it's a pretty solid job that we have that we do with the coffee. Um, and our goal is to continue growing as we are and, you know, over the next couple of years, or next couple of years to keep on growing. And if we can make it where it's a full-time job for me and others, and that's the, the ultimate goal there. Um, but at the same time, it, it's still like, it's like any job you do, I, I hate to say it. It's like, you have to, it has to be fun. You have to enjoy it. Um, and it doesn't feel like a job then. And to me, it, it, it got, yeah, it's work and there's some long nights and, and whatnot, but because I enjoy doing it and it's like the passion um, and what you learn and the people I've gotten to meet through the coffee industry and connections have, are just as much fun and, and hearing about, I don't know, hearing people that like, they get a bag from us and they're like, oh my God, you just changed my world. I didn't realize it, but this is what coffee tasted like. You're like, yeah, like exactly. Or, you know, like if you, I don't know, like you can put a smile on somebody's face just because they enjoyed a cup of coffee. Like to me, that's awesome win right there. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I do have a little nice little bag of Honduras here that I'm going to crack into. We've just finished the Kenyan. Um, so that's going to, that's going to get cracked into tomorrow. So I appreciate it. Um, you do have, uh, you've been kind enough to offer to support some of our listeners. And if anyone um, would like to have the chance to win some coffee, um, I've got a little ticker along the bottom there. Um, if you text coffee uh, to 33377, so that's coffee to 33377, um, we will put you into a, to a draw to win a uh, uh, a coffee sampler. So send that text in, and uh, we'll get you get you on the list to win. So thanks for the kindness there to uh, to offer that to to the listeners as well. Now it's uh, yeah. Hopefully uh, some people will get to test out and, and try, and you know, um, give you guys a sample of what I feel like our coffee is and what we, our product here at Linden Linden by Two. So yeah, love it. Um, now, now, Des, uh, we have a, a very good, dear mutual friend, um, Kate Gustafson. You spent some time with her in Kenya. Um, I'd love to hear about that experience. Before you go into that, she has a funny story where you guys were running together in New York uh, and people were just shouting your name left, right and center. And she's like, I don't want to be Des because this is insane where people will just shout your name in, in the street and you, you just have to deal with that. Tell me about that experience and then tell me about your experience together in Kenya. Yeah, um, that is really fun. I mean, it's it's awesome because our running community, like, once you're in it, it's so small. Like, you just feel like you know these people. And um, it's it can be startling, like, when people do think they know you and they're, like, surprised to see you somewhere. And they're like, Des! Like, they just feel like this need to, like, get your attention. And I feel like sometimes they think they know me. And I don't know them, um, or I'm like, maybe I should know them. And I'm like, my expression versus their expression are so different. Cause I'm like, should I know you? Or am I, should I be threatened by you? <laughs> it's like, yeah. and you're like, hey, this is this person I, I, um, like I feel like I know, which is awesome. Like, that's just really cool that our community um, is that close to it. And I wish I knew everyone so that I could have like a, a super big smile, like, hey, good to see you on my face. Um, but that's actually quite a funny take. It, it rarely ever happens, so she's exaggerating that for sure. But it's always funny when someone does at that moment where they're like, I know you, Des. I don't know yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty funny. And uh, yeah, no, I know Kate from, I think it was the second year I was in Kenya. And she um, was just like, yeah, I was just reading about these trips out here and it looked like so much fun. And she's obviously like, so into traveling and exploring and um she's just this super kind person who wants to like get to know things and see the world and like be a better person because of it and um mm -hmm. it was one of the best parts of those trips is the people you meet and meeting her there was awesome and then that we've been able to remain friends uh, from that experience is really cool um and so anytime she, she, we cross paths at the weirdest times and places. Uh, she was in Phoenix a couple of years ago and I went and ran with her group yeah. and to a hockey game with uh, her boyfriend um, was working there. And so it's like, yeah, Kate's in town. Like I've dropped everything. I don't care what like workout I have tomorrow. Um, yeah. Those people you clear your schedule for because it's, it's always great to catch up. So, and yeah. she's 
for me in New York to go on a run together. <laughs> yeah, that's she actually um she actually fondly recalls that instance in Phoenix where you're in the middle of a big training block and you're spending time down there and you just showed up for her and she said that that was kind of the um what she admired most about you was the fact that you had a big workout that you'd just done you've got a workout coming up you're there to focus but you showed up and, and hung out with their group and we're a, we're a good sport about it so yeah she definitely holds fond memories of that experience as well it's so it's so funny because they like the things we need it like that we didn't realize we needed um you show up and it's like it's just a run but seeing a friendly face and meeting her group and that they came out to Phoenix to like do this camp and get themselves better. And like that, I was coming off a really big slump in running where I'm like, this is stupid. Like, this is so selfish. I hate everything. Like, I just feel like a bad person's investing my time in this. And then you see these people who like are just so in love with the sport and they're so happy to be out there. And um, like, I just took, they don't, maybe they don't know it, but I took so much from them from that trip. I'm like, this, this is awesome. Like, this is what running should be about. It should be fun. It should be. Um, something you're looking forward to and exploring and so on and so forth. So it came at the right time for me too. Which is yeah, that's awesome. awesome. I think it's, that's a good lesson. Like no matter how you, what you think you're getting out of something or an interaction, the other person's also feeling like they're getting equal or better value out of it. So it's, uh, it's really interesting that kind of you both had that same experience on, on either side, um, which is really, really cool. Now, Ryan, um, I want to talk to I want to talk to you about a little bit more about your tri background and you know we we crossed uh, paths on the tri horse we crossed paths at a couple of races and um, had a lot of fun there but kind of tell me about your tri experience and some of your most memorable moments uh, in the sport. Ah, uh, so it's like interesting. I I remember like when I decided I wanted to do triathlon back in like, uh, maybe in like 2011 I had thought about it, but it was like somewhere during 2012 after does made the first team time made the team i was like oh i want to do this triathlon thing like no biggie i can make it to, uh, like, i can make it to Kona. <laughs> and I was into, like i had a buddy that like that was uh he had his pro card um which i that's whatever um i was like i'm a better swimmer than you i'm a better runner than you <laughs> like i should i can do this like no name, name. who was it uh, it's my, it's like my best buddy, uh, Ryan DeCook. Ryan DeCook. I'll put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, oh, like I can do this. This is no problem. So we like finished up the build up for Des uh, to make the team. She made the team, and then like I talked to Josh a little more about it. And he he's like, oh, I'll get you connected with uh, a coach, and he connected me to Matt Dixon at Purple Path. Yeah. So we started talking, and like we talked that whole summer. And I can even remember like in London, I can tell you this, the cafe and where I was sitting. And I remember like, yeah, meeting with Matt and chatting over the phone, like in London that summer, like, all right, we're going to make a go at this. And I was no problem. This is going to be like a joke. You can, you can just like hammer this out. And then I, <clears throat> fast forward, like riding and Matt invites me out. Like, so I kind of transitioned more into triathlon, like, the end of 2012, 20, beginning of 2013 is really when I started it. And Matt has a, a camp with all his pro triathletes. So at the time, uh, Jesse Thomas, Sarah Pompiano, Meredith Kessler, jeez, uh, 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 Callum Millward had just joined. Wow. joined okay. um, and a few others. And so like I'm like, go out to this camp like, oh, this is going to be great. And his bike coach is there. <laughs> and the first day, they like look at me and they're like, "What the fuck is this? Like, this is like a train wreck here. Like, uh, like, <laughs> like I'm in the pool. I'm like, I can swim. I'm like swimming well. It wasn't bad. That was no biggie. But then we get on the bike and they like look at me and they're like, "Jesus, you look like you're like going to a church here. You're like, you're like sitting straight up on the arrow bars and you're like, we got a you like, got your beach cruiser look yeah, on exactly like." It was like a, and I'd really never ridden outside on before. And first day outside, really, it was on a tri bike in the hill down the freaking gauntlet of San Francisco city riding, like right across the Golden Gate Bridge. And I just remember like laughing and being like, "Oh my god, what the hell am I doing here?" And uh, it was a, it was like an eye opener 
um, so I transitioned into it. And like that first year, I did a first, uh, I did a half, and then like three weeks later, did a full. And I had like a great swim, really good swim. I think I was like top fifteen out of the water uh, in the amateurs, and bike was like going good. And like I see Des, I'm like, oh, we got this. This is this is awesome. And I think it was about mile twenty one or so. Was it? Yeah, no, like mile 21, you're like, okay, I think I got this. This is going to be great. Kona, baby. And then mile 24, like literally mile 24, he's like, I effing hate this. This is the dumbest idea I've ever had in my entire life. I woman. I was like, oh, let's get finish, baby. Maybe. Yeah, 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 just do it. Yeah. It's funny, and, and everyone who's done it has been in that position where, like, you know, you're rolling along at whatever, mile 20 of a marathon or on the, at the end of an Ironman, and you're like, this is so easy. You're slapping hands, like, this is no problem. And then within a minute or, you know, a couple of miles, you're, like, ready to find a hole to crawl into. Yeah, so that was, like, that first year. But as the year progressed, it changed, and um, I, I started learning more of the sport and, and getting better. And um, I think over the next couple of years, we had some we made it to Kona twice, made it to world championship half world championships a couple of times. Um I was runner up at Whistler one year in the full and I think third overall in the half one year and uh the one year at Lake Tahoe I ended up uh lost by like five seconds. Didn't know we were like closing down, just like yeah. you know, like one of those things, it's just one of those days and I don't know. I fell in love with the sport. It's uh, it's so different than just running, but it's a uh, it's a testament of like endurance, nutrition, mind over matter, and it's just like to challenge your body. Um, yeah. It's it's been super fun, but like I think it helps like meeting people like you when we were on Everman Jack together, and that great group of guys to have fun with it. Like it makes it even better. Type yeah. Thing. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Finding the community, I think, is the biggest thing. Um, now, I hate cutting off conversations, but we're almost at time here, and I want to make sure we get in our three questions. Um, now, I'm going to ask these on every one of these episodes. We're going to go live daily in May, so you guys get to start. Um, I'm going to go Ryan and then Des uh, for each of these ones. So the first question is, what's one thing uh, that's changed during isolation? that you want to keep once you, once we all move back to our new normal? What's one thing you want to keep in your life that's changed since you started isolation? Uh, I would say like just more like relaxing in the evening and like just like you can forget, a, like, I don't know, say you forget about some things and just like, okay, hey, you've been into the evening, like just relax and enjoy being around each other, I think. Love it. Same question? Same question, yep. Um, I think you've seen way more people like reach out and try and be helpful. Like, you know, just more kindness when you see other people struggling um, and chipping in. And it's like kind of our thing with the coffee. It's super small, but maybe it helps someone out. So hopefully people yep. you know, continue to be kind. And I think that I'm going to try and continue to be more kind. Love it. That's awesome. Um, second question. What's one thing you thought was important before isolation that you're happy to leave in the past? You're going to let go of and never bring back. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, God damn. <laughs> stumped. Uh, you, uh, I'm stumped here. I got to think. Something before I. Des, what about you? Um, probably just like. This is pretty cliche, but like material things, like mm -hmm. I would come home after a trip and be like, I'm so tired. I just went on this trip and I'm going to spend some of the money that I made because I earned it. And like I would buy stupid crap like a lot. And <laughs> I don't actually need it. And like I haven't, I haven't run a credit card in quite a while now. And I'm like pretty proud of myself. And my, I haven't, I don't really think I need to. So maybe just yeah. dive that type of stuff back. That's awesome. That's a good one. Yeah, I think it's like enjoying realizing what you like that's kind of said, like realizing what you have. You can do a lot with what you have, whether it be like your home or your family. Um there's just you can enjoy enjoy what you have. You don't have to figure figure out how to enjoy what you have and enjoy what so, 
Yeah. We're yeah. going to get this one. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No way. Never. Um, final question. What's your most memorable moment of joy during isolation? When was that one moment you had? You're like, oh my God, like we're lucky. Life is good. And you, you felt joyful. Um, probably, well, gosh, there's been a lot. I mean, I guess it's like been a good time to appreciate everything, but maybe, um, honestly, when the coffee orders were rolling in and not because we're like, oh yeah, cha-ching coffee orders. But it was like, we're doing this thing to help. And like the people that we surround ourselves with and that we're affiliated with, like are all really good people and they want to help too. And maybe it's just buying coffee and hoping it gets to somebody else. But like, we're lucky to have awesome people around us and supporting us. Very yeah. cool. I think it's like that, that feeling, yeah, like Des said, an awesomeness of like what happened there with the coffee but also the ability like to be lucky that we have jobs and that we're able to do what we are every day via our normal jobs or coffee or for does like running like and that's we get to do that and you still get to do that every day no matter what it is um it's pretty awesome especially with like the running like no matter what someone can't take that away from you type thing so what ryan's trying to say is that one time he beat me in a workout <laughs> I think I saw photos of that. I think when Eric posted some photos, he's like half stepping you and he's like two two steps ahead of you and you're like, get out of here, man. What are you doing? You're just doing that for the photos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's hilarious. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to have this conversation. It's kind of kicked off this little project of having a 45 minute chat with amazing people. Every day in May, I may have bitten off more than I can chew, and Lauren may not be stoked that I'm doing this every single day in May. Um, but here we are, and we're finding consistency. So I appreciate you guys showing up and, and doing this with me, uh, learning more about your story and uh, and checking in on, on your isolation journey as well. So um, don't forget tomorrow, everyone who's listening, tune in same time, 3.30 p.m. We'll have Brenda Martinez, uh, Team New Balance athlete, amazing motivational um, person, so I can't wait to 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 talk to her and uh, and have a conversation with her. So, thank you so much, Des Ryan. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. You guys are amazing. See you soon. Hey, thank you. Take care. Peace. Bye.